Welcome to the Animal Crossing New Horizons Guide to September. This is the ninth in what is 12 videos to guide you into making the most out of every month of the year in Animal Crossing New Horizons. We'll discuss all the different creatures that can be caught, events that will happen, and birthdays that will be celebrated. Keep in mind that this video is being made in August of 2021 and there's plenty of updates to come that might introduce content that's not covered in this video. But without further ado, let's get into it. September is the start of the fall season in Animal Crossing New Horizons. This means that you'll start to see a few changes around your island, including a change in grass color, tree color, decorations, and perhaps most importantly, acorns and pine cones will begin falling from your trees. These ingredients are used to make a variety of trees bounty items that you can earn during the entire fall season. The fourth and final bug off of the year happens on the fourth Sunday of the month. This will be your last chance to grab all of the bug off furniture and accessories from Flick before it returns next year in June. Your points will carry over from the previous bug off, so hopefully you have some saved up. For the entire month of September, you can pick up a Grape Harvest Basket from Nook Shopping in celebration of the Grape Harvest Festival. It's one of many items you can pick up this month, so get it now before it's too late. Returning this year is the Moon Viewing event. New this year is a couple of items, these being Dango and Mooncakes, to add to the Moon Rug that you can pick up from September 12th to the 21st. Added in the 1.11 update is the Korean holiday of Chuseok. You can pick up the traditional Korean rice cake called Songpyeon from Nook Shopping between the 12th and the 21st as well. From August 23rd to September 22nd, you can wish upon shooting stars to earn Virgo fragments. Use these fragments to make the Virgo harp after learning the recipe from Celeste. From September 23rd to October 22nd is Libra season. Like before, you can earn Libra fragments to make the Libra scale using the recipe you earn from Celeste. The following villagers all celebrate their birthday in the month of September in order from the 1st to the 30th. Violet, Flo, Spork and Maggie, Callie, Greta, Caesar, Tucker, Astrid, Pinky, Pecan, Peewee, Boone, Moose, Ricky, Tutu, Ed, Whitney, Bubbles, Fuchsia, Octavian and Norma, Henry, Anka, Cranston, Apple, Mitzi, Teddy, Beardo, Cody, Marshall, and Monique. While September is technically the first month of fall, there's still a lot of fish remaining from the summertime. That said, a lot of them will be leaving after September, 23 of them in fact. With 8 appearing this month for the first time, it's another busy month of collectibles for your Critterpedia. Here's the fish that you need to worry about, starting with the 23 that are leaving. The pond-dwelling crawfish can be caught all day until the end of September and shouldn't be too hard to get. If you don't though, you'll have to wait until April to see it again. After only arriving in August, the soft-shelled turtle won't stick around long. Add the fact that it's rather uncommon and you should make sure that you get this creature before the month is over. It's your last chance to get a sweet fish until July, although you probably should have caught plenty of them by this point considering they aren't all that rare. There's two fish this month that are both appearing and leaving. The salmon is one of them, arriving in your river mouths starting in September. Failing to get them this month means that you'll have to wait a whole nother year to get it again. Likewise, the king salmon has the same spawning conditions as its lesser counterpart, but it's much larger and just slightly more valuable. This means that it is, of course, rarer as well. Caught in the morning to afternoon hours is the nibblefish. They're rather uncommon, so make sure you get one now, as they won't be back until May. Rather adorably, the piranha will chase you down in the museum exhibit if you manage to catch one and donate it. Do so now though, because they'll be gone until June. One of the many rare summer fish that are leaving this month is the arowana. This ancient fish will fetch a good price, but you should prioritize donating it before the month is over. 
Another rare summer fish is the Dorado, which is one of a few fish in the game that ties for being the highest selling price, that being 15,000 bells. So catch them for donating or for a good profit. Bring some bait to your ponds this month, as the gar might test your patience if you're hoping to just stumble upon one. They're quite rare and won't be back for a while unless you get one now. The Arapaima is the largest freshwater fish in the game. Because of that, they'll be quite difficult to reel in. Well worth it though for its high selling price, so get one before the month is over. You'll need to stay up pretty late to catch a saddled bee shear, as their weird hours and decent rarity will make them tough to get. Moving over to the ocean now, the clownfish is something that you've probably caught plenty of by this point, but with the warm weather leaving, so will this fish, and you won't see them again until April. Sharing many of the same characteristics of the clownfish, the surgeon fish is a little more uncommon, but it is also a fish that you shouldn't have too much trouble getting. Also available all day is the butterfly fish, which will also be gone until April if you don't get one now. You should have caught many pufferfish this summer, but if you haven't, or if you recently started your island, or just haven't done much fishing, then you should get this fish before the end of the month. The blue marlin has some weird spawning conditions. It's only on your piers in your ocean, it's available for a little bit of time in the winter and spring, and then again in the summer to fall. So even if you do get it now, it'll be back in November. Why'd they make you so difficult? Ah, the pain of thinking that you're reeling in a shark, only to be slightly disappointed by it being an ocean sunfish instead. It still sells for a decent amount, but the real value is donating it to the museum before September is over. The very lucrative sharks are all going away this month, the first of which is the saw shark. It's similar to most other sharks, being that it's distinguishable by its fin and late spawn times. Just the same as the saw shark, the hammerhead shark will be leaving as well. Despite its intimidating appearance, it's actually one of the cheaper sharks at only 8,000 bells. Tied for the most expensive fish in the game, the Great White Shark is worth 15,000 bells, so your bank account will be missing this guy when he's gone until June. The Whale Shark is the only shark available in the daytime, so if you see a fin, then you'll know that it's either a Whale Shark or... A sucker fish. The trolls of the ocean will be departing in September, and good riddance as well. That's all for the fish leaving this month, now let's talk about the ones that are arriving. One of the more noteworthy fall catches is the pike. It'll be a very large fish that you can find in your rivers until the end of the year in December. The cherry salmon has a stint in fall and one in spring. If you didn't get it earlier this year, then now's your chance again as they return until November. Inseparable from the cherry salmon, the char also returns for the second time this year, with a much more rare spawning chance than the cherry salmon. But the cream of the crop in terms of fish arriving this month is the extremely rare golden trout. It's worth 15 grand, and like the two fish previously, it only spawns in the high elevation rivers on your island. Available from September to November is the Mitten Crab. It's a small river creature that's available from the evening to morning hours. Finally, the sturgeon is a very valuable fish that can be found in the river months starting in September and spawning all the way until March. It is yet another busy month for bug catching. Not as bad as last month though, with only 18 bugs leaving and 9 bugs arriving. So here's the 27 bugs of concern this month, starting with the 18 that are leaving. Flying around rather commonly is the tiger butterfly. There's pretty much no excuse to have not gotten one by now, so uh, yeah, just catch one. If you don't play much at night, you may not have seen many Emperor Butterflies. Log on in the evening though, and you should see one without too much difficulty. The Agrius Butterfly is a quick and semi-rare butterfly that will be gone after September. Hopefully they aren't too quick for you, as they're gone until April if you can't get one. The Raja Brooks Birdwing Butterfly has strange spawning months, with it technically leaving in September, only to arrive again in December. So try to get one now, but don't be too upset if you don't manage to. 
The largest butterfly in the world has a selling price that justifies its rarity. That being said, pick up a Queen Alexandra's birdwing butterfly before it leaves until May. Another large winged insect is the Atlas Moth, however this one only appears in the evening and on the side of your trees. It's gone after September and won't be back until April. A daytime loving moth is the Madagascan Sunset Moth. You can catch these bugs along with a lot of the butterflies around your flowers for the final time until April. Hopping around your island grounds is the grasshopper. It didn't stay long, having only appeared in July, but you should have had plenty of time to catch one by this point. The last of the cicadas finally leaves, with the walker cicada being the last of them. It only arrived in August, so if you haven't gotten one yet, do so now before it's too late. One of three bugs leaving that spot on your rivers is the pond skater. It's difficult to spot, but not all that rare. Another water-bound bug is the diving beetle, which is another bug that you'll find decently often on the surface of your rivers. The final of the water bugs is the giant water bug. This file creature is decently valuable and not all that rare either. You'll need some tree stumps on your island for a couple of bugs, one of which is the Rosalia Batessi beetle, which will be gone until May if you don't get it now. Crawling all around your islands are the earth-boring dung beetles. While they have been around only since July, they are still quite common and shouldn't be too hard to get. The last of the expensive palm tree beetles leaves this month. The goliath beetle is a month late compared to the rest of them, but will leave for good after September. Another valuable bug that is leaving is the rainbow stag, which is a bug that you'll have to get in the evening hours of your island. The walking leaf will disguise itself as furniture beneath your trees, but don't let it fool you too many times, as they'll be gone until July if you don't get one now. The only bug that we're all happy to have leaving this month, though, is the mosquito. This pest will return to the depths of hell until it returns again in June. Now, onto the bugs arriving this month. I mean, you definitely should have caught the common butterfly by now, but it's available again now, if you haven't. Same with the yellow butterfly, the only reason that you have as to why you haven't caught it yet is because maybe you restarted your island recently, right? Notorious in Animal Crossing for signifying the fall season, the monarch butterfly is very common around your flowers. You have until November to get it. The pleasant chirps of the cricket returns, and they're quite common as well. They should make for plenty of soothing sounds during the evening hours of your island. Along with that, the bell cricket is available, sharing the same spawning conditions as the regular cricket. The red dragonfly is a slow and not very expensive dragonfly that will often hover over your rivers in the morning to evening hours. The other stump bug this month is the violin beetle. Make sure that you have several tree stumps around your island to ensure the highest chance of catching one. Hit some rocks around your island and you might just get a pill bug. It's the nighttime alternative to the other rock dwelling bug. The centipede. It's available opposite to the pill bug, but under the same spawning circumstances, that being beneath your rocks. And finally, the sea creatures round out your collectibles this month with 8 creatures leaving and 5 new ones arriving. This makes for a total of 13 benthic creatures to discuss, starting with the 8 ones that are leaving. Sea grapes aren't a hard creature to find as they remain stationary and are very common with just a little bit of deep sea diving. The sea urchin prefers warmer waters, so get one now before the winter months set in. They won't be back until May if you don't. The Slate Pencil Urchin shares the same spawning conditions as the Sea Urchin, except for the fact that they're only available from 4pm to 9am. The Beautiful Moon Jellyfish is an easy-to-catch benthic creature that makes for good decoration on your island. Collect them now before it's too late. The premier catch of the underwater world is the Gigas Giant Clam. This behemoth is worth 15,000 bells and is very rare. You'll need to spend a lot of time finding one, and when you do, <laughs> good luck catching it. It's extremely fast and elusive. 
The Tiger Prawn has a decent selling price for its rarity, along with the fact that it's pretty easy to catch and you'll be happy to find one of these. The Horseshoe Crab, while being neither a horseshoe nor a crab, is still a decently valued benthic creature that will be gone until July if you don't get it now. The final creature leaving this month is the Flatworm, which didn't get much time in the light having only appeared in August. Now, onto the five creatures that are arriving this month. The Oyster arrives this month and plays a role in the Turkey Day event as an ingredient to the meal that Franklin makes, so perhaps stock up on a few while they're available. The Totally Tubular Turban Shell appears again in September. It's gone after December, but it's back again for a few months in the springtime. Likewise, this is the second time that the Chambered Nautilus has become available this year, with this stint lasting only until the end of November. The Quick Rare Umbrella Octopus returns again, and fun fact, it appears in the same months for both the Northern and the Southern Hemisphere. And finally, the Sweet Shrimp is a small, slow-moving benthic creature that is available in the evening to early morning hours. Thank you for watching the September edition of my monthly guides. If you want a link to my previous and future monthly guides, then you can click on the playlist that you see here. Thank you for the support on the channel as always, and come support me on Twitch as well, where I'm live six days a week at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Thank you again, and I'll see you next month for the Animal Crossing New Horizons Guide to October.